Frank's going to do his presentation. Uh, he does it, and I'm going to do a presentation that's entirely practical on uh, how to do it as well. Sim similar. Are you calling mine impractical? No, yours is. I think you you cover more of the why. Okay. I, yeah. I don't cover the why at all. Yeah. I don't know why. That, yeah, well, that's the whole, that's kind of the whole point as to to why. Well, really, why not? So, all right, this is the um, getting started with Drupal on uh, Windows and other systems talk. Um, it's about uh, really getting a development environment set up in Windows. Why that's uh, you know why it's kind of a, a pain to set up a development environment on pretty much any system and why it's not really necessary anymore. Oh, and Mike just showed up. Good. Okay, so I'm Frank Robert Anderson. My, uh, I'm Frob on Drupal.org on IRC. Um, I work with Mike at uh, Safaria Webworks, and I, uh, I, write, I wrote the Google Analytics event tracking module, and I maintain the Drupal for Firebug module. I know it's broken. I'm fixing it. Um, Okay, so this is the overview. We'll be installing the uh, the common Drupal development tools for Windows, uh, which is you know Git, Drush, and uh, you know your uh, AMP stack. Then the other tools on the uh, uh, the other tools for Windows, Notepad plus plus. I'm not going to go through that just because we're kind of I ran a little late. And then I'm going to go over why we don't really need to do this anymore. And VirtualBox, you have Quick Start and Drupal Pro. And then Kerry's going to come up afterwards and tell us about uh, his stack as well. So you've got uh, when you're, you know, when you're uh, developing on Windows, you got two real choices for your AMP stack. One is WAMP, the other is ZAMP. Um, ZAMP, it, it, it's okay to install. It does cause some small problems at times. I, uh, a lot of it has to do with path issues and uh, you know. Uh, DNS issues. It doesn't always edit the host file the way it's supposed to. It's a little bit not well supported. Features and latest release don't really matter. Um, you just go to the website and get it. You're not going to get the old version, I'm sure. WAMP's the same thing. It's same features, same has the same thing. Only difference is it's a lot easier installation. Um, neither one's better. They both do exactly the same thing. They manage your MySQL, your Apache. Uh, and your PHP. They both do the same thing, and I'm using WAMP for this presentation. So here's the installing WAMP demo. All right, so here we go. It's very simple, very straightforward. First, type, uh, first thing is to be able to type. Just come in here, Google for WAMP. You'll find it. Now, the interest, uh, the thing about installing uh, WAMP is you need to. Yeah, this is the 32-bit version of Windows 7 that I'm using. You have to make sure you install the the proper. Um, Visual C++ uh, redistributional package. Um, it'll have issues if you don't do it. I'm not exactly sure what issues it, it'll have. I've always just installed it. It's not a big deal. You just download it from Windows, or you just download it from Microsoft, and uh, it installs real quick and easy. Then you download WAMP server and you install it. You just all default settings. No, uh, no big issue here, uh, with that. And I'm going to be doing this from uh, from time to time to try to speed things up so so I've already uh, I'm using VirtualBox here uh, to, to do this you'll notice I'm running a uh, Macintosh computer uh, to do a Windows dem uh, a Windows installation and the reason for that is I use VirtualBox for uh, for most everything. 
that's really what this is about is, you know, we should be using VirtualBox. You see that I've got this uh, kind of set up here as we go along. So now I'm going to be moving over to the uh, uh, WAMP already being installed. All right, so start. It's a bit of a fast forward here, but so so here you have uh, the local host for when WAMP is uh, from after WAMP is installed. Now, what WAMP gives you is down uh, down here. You've got the the WAMP server. You click on that, and it has. Uh, this is one of the the niceties of WAMP over ZAMP. For instance, is you can come in and you can put in your. Uh, you can change your PHP version settings if you've got more than one PHP version uh, installed. You can also tell it to turn on and off uh, different modules for PHP. It makes it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy for that sort of thing. Typically, you don't need to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. You just, you know. After you install a PHP module, you don't necessarily need to edit it ever again. So this, uh, uh, it just is easy when you do need to do it. So the next, the uh, next thing is installing Git. Uh, Git is easy to install as well. You just go to uh, git-scm.com. And you download the installer. I'm going to walk you through this one because it doesn't. Uh, I don't use the uh, the default settings uh, for uh, for the Git installation. The default settings are a little bit dumbed down, uh, it, and uh, I'm not exactly sure uh, why they uh, you know why they use those particular settings, but they do. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Oh, so uh, Git is a version control system. Uh, it's the one that's used. Uh, it's for source code version control. It's used for, uh, in Drupal uh, to maintain projects. So um, that was a. The question was, what is Git? So, um, are you familiar with uh, source version control? What did you say? VSS, Visual Story Safe. Microsoft. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, not familiar with, <laughs> wasn't familiar with that tool. That's, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, it's along the same lines. The The main difference is, um, I'm not sure, but, because uh, I didn't The main difference is we probably fill a book. Okay, so. Gary says the main difference is they'll fall, uh, fill a book. I'm repeating because we are recording this, so, although it probably heard you. Okay, so here we have the um, we have some of the things on here. Advanced context menus. This is all uh, that's all default for that. That's default here. Here's where I change it. Is um, I change it to override the stuff that comes from the Windows command line. Uh, by default. So what this does is it changes find.exe and sort.exe to things that work better for Git. The next, uh, the next little bit in the menu here is I also change it to check out as is and commit as is. This is the one setting that I don't understand why the Windows, um, why it would change anything at all for, uh, by default in Windows, uh, the Git install installer. So these would be for the um, uh, these would be for the uh, for the you know carriage return line feed uh, character that's used. Windows uses is a different one than uh, than Unix does, and so so in uh, was that out of focus? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So what I do uh, I change it to this, which is y it, you commit it exactly as it's written, and you check it out exactly as it's written. So it doesn't do any of those conversions or anything for you. I don't like things to automatically change things like this for me. Okay, so it does the installation here. Uh, 
And at this point, I'm just going to actually hit cancel. Because, just like before, I've got it over here already set up. This time we've got a problem. So we get to watch a different progress bar instead of the git installation progress bar. But yeah, so what I'm uh, what I'm doing here is that, uh, with VirtualBox as you're developing, you can set different um, snapshots, and so as you're working with something, say for uh, for this presentation, setting up a development environment, you can save every step along the way because a lot of times when you're doing this type of thing for the first time, especially, you mess something up, and rather than having to you know live with that thing that you messed up or go back and reinstall everything up until that point. Um, you can just go back and forth along this. So, how am I doing on time, Carrie? You have ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Okay. So that might be the end of this presentation because my entire thing just died. Not very good for a uh, virtual box. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, go through the the slideshow then. Uh, virtual uh, virtual box just ate my Windows 7 virtual machine in its entirety. So thanks, Oracle. Um, okay, so <laughs> yeah, no, it it. Um, you might reboot. I see it says inaccessible. Uh, I've never seen it delete files. Neither have I. I'm not going to deal with it because I've only got a, uh, 10 minutes before, for Carrie to go up. And so I've got five minutes to get through what I need to do, and then you've got five minutes for to talk about that. And we will hold you to five minutes, Mike. <laughs> okay. So installing Drush. Here's the big, yeah, here's the big issue with installing Drush on Windows. It has a Drush. Uh, there is a Drush installer for Windows. It does not work. I don't think it has ever worked, the Drush installer. It always causes issues. Oh. So, are you shocked, Chris? Yeah, because I have students downloading it and they didn't say shit. Oh, they, told, they came to me, yes? You're talking about yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, they came up to me later on. They're like, yeah, I downloaded the Drush installer. Sorry. It doesn't work. So you, what you have to do is you have to install a bunch of crap to get Drush working. Um, so you have to download and install these Unix uh, executables, uh, ins uh, which is libarchive, gzip, wget, and gtar. Then you have to go in and replace the good uh, the tar that comes with gtar with the good gtar, which is bsd tar. Then you have to set a bunch of path variables in the uh, in the Windows environment. You're confusing me. When is the beer coming? <laughs> <laughs> after the after the installing Drush demo. Installing Drush is relatively simple because all you're doing is downloading it, putting it in a certain spot, and then setting the path variables again to point to Drush so that you can execute it from the command line. This is where I would be showing you some command line stuff, but it's not going to work. So making Drush work, you know, just what I said, install prerequisites, install Drush, set up the Windows path environments, and then cross your fingers and hope that it works because it doesn't every single time. Oh, because it's... Well, on because it's Drush on Windows, so it's the P, uh, the PHP version, the Drush version, all of these things matter, um, and it's uh, it's not always going to work for you. So this is that's what you get for supporting my uh, for supporting Microsoft, because Microsoft is a company that was built on the work of better and more creative unicorns and blah 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 blah. Building very, very, uh, in development environments sucks. It just sucks. It's uh, so it doesn't matter what system you're building it on, be it you know Apple, you know, be it open source uh, Ubuntu or uh, or Center, whatever you're building it on. It's not a. Uh, it always sucks when you're de uh, building your development environment. You just want to build stuff, so you don't need to do this because VirtualBox does it for you. And almost, you'll see the you you've already seen the almost because of this right here you do get issues. 
sometimes. So the future, you know, environment, envir uh, devi uh, development environments is a, you know, our pre-built systems. There's Quick Start, Drupal Pro, and uh, Kerry's going to go, uh, go through his. Name for mine, but it's free. Oh, so free super duper development environment from Kerry. Super. Not super duper, it's just super. All right, so they make it easy. You know, another uh, another system is Vagrant. It makes development environments really easy. Mike, say a few words about uh, about Quick Start. Why is great? Uh, it's or not Quick Start, Drupal Pro, right? Both, both of which, well, no, they're, they're both relevant. Mm -hmm. The main difference between the two is the desktop and the version of Ubuntu, and they both yeah. get you developing mm -hmm. Drupal in five minutes. Yeah, the, the nothing to set up. Just Right. The the big difference that I have from uh, from a user's point of view is Quick Start uh, Quick Start works better on older uh, older systems with less hardware. Drupal Pro because it has a lot of the new Unity stuff with Ubuntu and everything. It's uh, it requires a bit more hardware to uh, to push it. It's also built on a newer version of Ubuntu, right? And it requires uh, the 3D graphics. So both of which, yeah, just assume newer hardware. Okay, so the what I just said slide, developing on Drupal's or anything is complicated. VirtualBox allows us to use pre-built development environments, and local development environments are over. You don't need them anymore. Here's a bunch of links. This is if you want to go through the steps that I almost went through. Um, these, these are how to do it. And then at the bottom, that's my contact information. Okay. I will stop.